Well, for you want us to talk? Yes, you mentioned it. this happened right at the end of our last show. Mm-hmm. I want to start that discussion by, you know, what was show was Greenwater all and all the time. He'd come in and help them out. In democracy he, now. He was there constantly. Go to. They loved him so. They throw him under the bus. Well, wait. Should we, should we first explain what happened? Not everybody oh, follows. Oh yes, I'm sorry, Glenn you, Green. Why don't you explain what happened? You you caught it before I did. Uh, yeah. So Glenn Greenwald, who we've always been um, admirers of his work. Yeah, he does good work. He's uh, he he's kind of straight down the middle kind of guy. Um, at least when it With comes a to progressive angle, a it's progressive fine. angle, right? Um, he's not dishonest. We followed him since uh, um, he started what we called the $250 million blog, because uh, that's what we were joking about it, because it was set up and financed by Pierre Omidyar from the Omidyar <laughs> Network. And yeah, he's a, a PayPal billionaire, and uh, he's a, a very, very, uh, he's he's kind of like a Soros guy, and he sponsors a lot of uh, liberal left um, groups, etc. So we are yeah. all kind of looking at the intercept, which we jokingly call the two hundred fifty million dollar blog, as okay. We'll see how long it takes until the corruption sets in. And Glenn Greenwald kind of happily went on his way and continued to do great reporting. And this was after the Snowden revelations when he was working for the Guardian and and uh, the New York Times was in that gambit as well. Of course, that all turned sour. Because um, everyone loved what S- Snowden was top of the bill. Everybody loved him until WikiLeaks started, you know, doing stuff that was anti Hillary Clinton, emails, etc. Then Glenn-, Glenn Greenwald somehow by association became kind of tainted and like, ooh, he's kind of icky because he stands up for WikiLeaks and WikiLeaks is no good. WikiLeaks also used to be loved by everybody, for those of you who haven't been around for, you know, seven or eight years. And, um, all of a sudden, he abruptly resigns from the intercept, saying that he wanted to publish, a, and he has contractually, he can publish whatever he wants, and if the intercept doesn't want it, uh, then he can take it to some other outlet. So they refused to publish his article, at least without heavy editing, uh, where he, I think it was kind of only mentioning the Hunter Biden issues, not necessarily No, it was diving. pretty much about the Hunter Biden coverage. I read it. Oh, he, oh you read the piece? Uh, oh, yeah. It's out. It's it's on Substack. All oh, right, with right, the, right. With Taibbi's stuff, and right. it was about. And he said that they they would let him run the piece in, except he has to take off out anything about Joe Biden and any anti Joe Biden stuff. Right. And as he described it on his various interviews, he ended up on Tucker Show. Mm. Uh, he described it as they they want Joe Biden to be the president, and so they wouldn't let me run this piece, and so he quit in a huff. And, uh, and for which we congratulate him, and I immediately value for value. I immediately subscribe to him on Substack. Tina subscribed too. We, I love him. I love what Taibbi. I don't agree, obviously, with everything, but that's how it's supposed to go. These guys are good journalists, and they need to be supported. And I will gladly help him with his podcast because he needs some sound help. Starting with that, I bought that damn mic that he has to see, and it's crap. The Shure Fifty Five. It's not. It's not the mic for me. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, that's not the mic I would recommend. No. No. Anyway, so he also used to be. In fact, we've probably played many clips of Glenn Greenwald from Democracy Now because that's the beat. Lots of because he's good. He's a little wordy. He's a little wordy when he writes too. He's not. A, he's not the writer of Ta- Taibbi is the guy you want to read yeah. if you want to just read yeah. some tight writing. Yeah. It's dynamite. Uh, Greenwald is wordy, and he goes on and on. He made. So he wrote this thing. So, and he, so that what got me was listening to Amy basically throw him under the bus Mm. and then read from a press release by the editor in chief of The Intercept, some woman who, if you look at a picture of you, go, Oh my God, I can just see this coming down the way. (laughs) She's a SJW up to the max and a harsh, harsh woman. And uh, she reads this press release and just base and leaves it at that without defending him or anything. I thought this was one of the lowest, creepiest things Amy has ever done on that show to throw out her guy that who's who's done nothing but help that show and throw him under the bus like this. It was disgusting. 
In media news, the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Glenn Greenwald has resigned from The Intercept after accusing the news outlet of censoring an article he wrote about Joe Biden. Greenwald, who co-founded The Intercept, accused editors of refusing to, quote, publish the article unless I agree to remove all of the sections critical of the candidate they want to win. Greenwald's article focused on disputed corruption allegations about Biden's son, Hunter, that first appeared in The New York Post. In a statement, The Intercept said in part, while he accuses us of political bias, it was he who was attempting to recycle the dubious claims of a political campaign, the Trump campaign, and launder them as journalism. Oh, <laughs> wow. And there was no word, you know, there was nothing like, she didn't mention anything of the work that he's done with her no. or on the show. No. None of that. She is such a creep for doing this report. Yeah. I mean, I have always thought she was a creepy, but she is a total creep for doing this to Glenn Greenwald. And by the way, Scott uh, Adams, just to make you feel a little better, talked about this a little bit and called him Jeff Greenwald. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know why that should make me feel better. It is funny. I, yeah, do, I, 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 I do enjoy it. But this was, this was disgusting. Wow. wow. She never asked for his comment, never brought, you know, normally in, in a normal day and age, she would have brought him on. He would have come on. And he would have done his normal yak 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 thing, but no, no, she didn't invite him. She just read that press release from the from the intercept, uh, slamming him, and yeah. and a lot of it goes back. According to Taibbi, it actually goes back to Greenwald's not going along with the program with Russia Gate. Right. right, right. He was right. a very he was a naysayer from the beginning. Yeah. Well, he was skeptical about it, and he asked questions, and yeah, yeah he didn't get answered. I mean, any answers. I mean, it's it's kind of like Dershowitz. You know, Dershowitz was the constitutional lawyer of America. And the minute he said, hey, you know, I don't see it that way, then all of a sudden he's the douche. He's done. He's He's out. 